awesome. I'm excited. This is going to be a fun interview. So much exploration and dancing and cool stuff. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. So, ladies and gentlemen, this interview is brought to you by Burn Up Coaching and the 21 Day Challenge. And if you are an entrepreneur, a high achiever, you feel like you've been stuck or spinning your wheels, or you're just not achieving and accomplishing at the level that you know you're capable of, and you want to kick in the butt, you want to be held accountable, you want to hold yourself accountable, and you want to achieve better results than you have before, the 21 Day Challenge might be the perfect fit for you. What you'll do in the 21 Day Challenge is you'll get crystal clear on your one year goals. Where do you want to be in one year? And then we'll break that down into bite sized steps so you get a specific action plan to accomplish your top priorities in the next 21 days. After that, we'll have daily progress reports to make sure that you are dialed in and achieving what you're supposed to be achieving weekly deep dive calls to make sure that we're uncovering the limiting beliefs and things that are keeping you stuck, stop or spinning your wheels. And then we'll dial in your daily routines, your your habits. We'll, we'll have a habit tracker. So many great tools and resources you'll get in this 21-day challenge to be your greatest possible self. So if that is something you're interested and committed in, send me a message, chris at beyourgps.com or on Facebook, Chris Burns at th3burns, facebook.com forward slash th3burns. And uh, would love to talk to you, see if it's a good fit for you. Good or good? Very good. Now, the next section is the iTunes review of the week, and that is by, who's it by? It's by, it's by Shanti Yogini. Shanti says, uplifting and inspiring. This podcast is true to its name. No matter what area of discussion we are interested in, it will help bring out our strengths and make us be our highest possible self in that specific area. I first listened to the episode Marketing with Heart versus Hype. Cindy and Chris rocked the show. Chris is natural in making the guests their highest possible self during the interview by asking the right questions. Time just flew by. Dear blessed and beloved Chris, keep rocking, keep inspiring. The world needs leaders like you. So thank you so much, Shanti. I appreciate you. And if you're listening or viewing and you love the show or want to give us some feedback on how we can improve, we always appreciate that. Just go to beergps.com forward slash iTunes and you can find our show there and give us a rating, review, and subscribe. And you can also search Becoming Your Greatest Possible Self on iTunes and find us like that. Or you can search Becoming Your Greatest Possible Self on Facebook and give us a review there. Either way, it is all perfect, and thank you in advance for doing that. Next up is this woman who I had the absolute pleasure of meeting. I believe it was a little bit ago, and uh, it was amazing because I met her at a networking event put on by Stephen uh, De La Cruz, and he has the Stigela Masterminds. Him and his wife, Angela, put on amazing masterminds and networking events. And so we had the blessing of connecting, Diba and I, at this event. And I just could tell that she's passionate. She's full of life. She's full of energy. And she also has that wisdom. And you'll find out, because she's a scientist, that she has the ability to do both. Yes, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. She does it both. And we're going to see how she does it both in this interview, talking about life as a dance and flowing through to wellness. So get excited. Hang tight. Be here. Take your pens, your papers out. Get ready to take some notes because she's going to share the wisdom. And make sure you stick around till the end because life can change in an instant. And you never know when you're going to hear that one thing that just wakes you up. Diba Sunny. Diba is a dancer and a scientist. She has been competitively dancing different types of styles throughout her life. She has traveled around the world teaching and performing different styles of dances of the world. She is also a master in science and as a clinical researcher. She is now a wellness coach and she integrates dance into wellness. And Diba is about to come on and have the time of her life on the Becoming Your Greatest Possible Self 12-Hour Marathon Deliver the Value. Diba, are you ready to rock it? Oh, I'm so ready to rock it. She is so ready to rock it. You are now <laughs> live on Becoming Your Greatest Possible Self. Thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule and all the scientific experiments and creation and dancing that you're doing to share with our audience how we can become our greatest possible self. Thank you so much. Aw, thank you. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much. I'm really excited to be here. And 
uh, to talk with you guys. Yes, it's going to be amazing. It already is amazing. Diva, <laughs> we're diving into the question of the day, which is based on the theme of today, which is today a universe of duality. So how has this concept of a universe of duality played a role and aspect in your life? I see you smiling over there. You're like, this is such an <laughs> awesome question. I love it. So how has it played a role in your life? How has it made a difference for you? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> 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 wow. Um, duality. There's just... What's so interesting is there's duality in everything. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. it's as simple as night and day. It's as simple as yin and yang, black and white, uh, fire and ice. Mm-hmm. Um, and what's really interesting, like when you when you look at an individual as a person, we have duality in each and every one of us and in all of our personalities. So I've come to learn how to embrace my duality. Mm. like to really embrace uh, the shadow side. I don't Mm. know if you're familiar with shadow work at all, but really uh, just embracing the shadow aspects of our our personalities, my personality, Mm. and almost leveraging that into a strength. (laughs) Yeah. How do you (laughs) do that? How do you do that? Well, it's all about really listening to your inner voice, listening to yourself. Hmm. So you might have tendencies uh, to think about things like, for ex- I'm just giving a, a funny example. Sure. So let's just say that um, I'm having this craving like uh, chocolate, for example, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Who doesn't like chocolate? Um, but this craving and I just like have this urge to eat the chocolate and maybe I feel like I need to eat the chocolate because I'm nervous or because Mm. I'm stressed or Mm. whatever. And I just feel like I really need it. Uh, So in a way that's kind of like it, you can either, you know, give in and eat as much binge eat and Mm. eat as much as you want, or you can kind of listen and think, well, why am I really craving this? You know, why, why is this really, why is this in, is this happening? Why I kind of like think of it as an indicator. And then I realize I like look deeper and think, okay, well, uh, this is happening in my life that maybe isn't as, uh, I'm not being authentic in this situation. Mm -hmm. So then I tend to just deal with it head on instead. Yeah. Wow. So it's what I hear is there's aspects of us that drive us fear, survival, scarcity, stuff like that, that drive us. And the shadow is like the place that we don't want to look because we don't yeah. want to uncomfort- un- confront the uncomfortable. We don't want to dig into the into the pain or what might be there that makes us feel insecure or less than or whatever. And really, like I think at the core of that is the ego attempting to protect itself, like mm-hmm. the ego mind of survival of fear-based actions and rationalization and what other people think and all this kind of stuff the self-image of ego so shadow work is being able to dig into that and hold a space for it and i think the the reason why we started talking about that is to embrace it right and embracing the duality and instead of living life trying to tell ourselves a a lie or pretend that you know we're perfect or oh there's nothing there don't worry about it ignore it blah 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 rather than that we say hey let's shine the light on it and find out what's going on and send it some love give it love accept it embrace it and integrate it so we can be more um a a, a more powerful bold uh, courageous loving you know kind human being in the world would you say that that's kind of the direction that 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 goes Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Cool. Cool. It's so interesting because we live in a world uh, just like kind of ingrained in our culture where we're just learning how to hide our pain or to Mm. run away from our pain or to mask our pain by Mm. by indulging in in different things or just trying to like temporarily put a bandaid on it. But and it's it's kind of a scary thing to to look into the shadow and to really see what's Mm. going on because that's we don't really talk about that commonly so it seems like it's unknown and scary but the reality is 
you you don't need to fear yourself hmm. like it's an indicator it is an indicator telling you to listen hmm. and all you have to do is just listen yeah slow down slow i think a lot of people <laughs> are just trying to like avoid it and not look at it and go to the next thing numb avoid um you know like what is it tune out kind of thing so i love i love where this is going first and i'm sure we're going to be talking about all kinds of really cool stuff about duality and dancing and and wellness and cool stuff like that so for everyone who doesn't yet know about you and they're learning about you they're excited to connect with you more why don't you share a little bit more about who you are and, and what you're working on today yeah so um basically i'm i'm a dancer i've been dancing pretty much my whole life i love dance um I dance all different types of styles from Latin dances, partner dancing to ballet and jazz and hip hop. Nice. Um, and I love how dance is just, it's so liberating. It's like mm -hmm. an outlet for me. It is an outlet to really express yourself and to let go. It's kind of like a meditation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like you just let go of everything that's happening around you and you just, you become so immersed and present in the moment. So that's how dance has been for me my whole life. And I'm also a scientist. <laughs> so, uh, I've been doing research, uh, in my, throughout my career, but I just, I'm really passionate about wellness and, and wholeness. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I love integrating the two types of work together and focusing on dance and using that to really help uh, have that as a tool to really uh, become more resilient in life and to enjoy life more. Yeah. I love it. I love it. So, so there's all these different aspects of you, which I find amazing. You know, like when whenever we can find a ballerina who's also an astrophysicist, you know, whatever it might be, it's it's really rad, right? So I think that what you're doing and and these different aspects of life, which I think a lot of people would say, how can you be really great at dancing and also a really great scientist? And it's like, well, we're living in this age of we can be, do, and have whatever we want, and we can, and, and especially that's what makes people stand out is having these unique aspects and flavors and gifts and abilities that we somehow figure out how to you know pair together or at least um, bring aspects of them into the other to to be able to make it unique and even more valuable and awesome and exciting and uh, cool so I love that and I know we're going to get into more of, of the philosophy behind it and before we go there I also want to dive back into your journey about how you became this you know celebrated woman who is in dancing who's in science and just doing all kinds of amazing things how did you get to where we are today what were some of the challenges that you faced along the journey and the evolution of your career your mindset to be able to be here and now great yeah so there have been quite a bit of challenges I, really really <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure everybody has challenges but it's just been really hard for me to really identify with who i am when i was growing up because i had so many interests and yet we're still trained to think oh you know you just got to become one thing mm. and you got to just stick to one thing but I felt like while I was growing up um, and like getting into college, I just felt like I couldn't really embrace who I was fully mm. because I would have to suppress one aspect of myself to be successful right. at one thing by like chasing one career path. And by doing that, I was really suppressing who I was mm. and I felt I got really depressed from it. Yeah because I felt like I was suppressing parts of my personality from, from being expressed. Mm. So of course, naturally you would be depressed mm. uh, wow. from that. And it's crazy because through, throughout all that, I actually got into a really bad car accident, which just really put icing <laughs> on the cake <laughs> and made me just completely disconnect. I felt so disconnected from who I was. Mm. Um, so like the, there was a point where I wasn't dancing for like three years. Wow. It was crazy. Like my body was just completely stiff and I, I couldn't move my neck. It was just, it, I felt like totally like my world was upside down. <laughs> 
But um, as I learned throughout my journey, just I really had to, I had no choice. Like I had to really listen to my inner voice and reconnect um, in a very integrative way, like physically reconnect, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, really integrate. And all my choices just, I needed to be really authentic with who I was. Mm. And by really embracing that, that inner voice, I came to embrace who I am and to, you know, it's okay to be a scientist and a dancer. Mm. I don't have to be one mold, you know, everybody's so unique. Um, if you look at the statistics, it's roughly about a, a 400 trillion to one chance of you even being born. Wow. So you, everybody in this life is just so unique and you have something unique to offer and you shouldn't, you shouldn't suppress that, your personality. Wow. So what, what do you think, what do you think the suppressing caused you to, um, when usually when something happens, when we, when we suppress something, another thing like really like tries to overcompensate or overextend itself so to speak what did you see how did you see yourself overextend when you suppressed these aspects of yourself and i think is is the suppress was the suppression like hey i need to go be a scientist and i can't really dance anymore or like what what was what was suppressed and what was expressed because of that suppression yeah that that was i i took the logical route at mm -hmm. first and i thought oh I need to really focus on studying and being a good student and really doing as much research as I can. And I, mm -hmm. and uh, as a result, it actually was a little bit harder to dance because, um, I mean, my focus was really just on academics. Mm -hmm. um, and what was interesting is I actually felt a lot of pain. Like I had a lot of tension and accumulation of pain stuck in my body and I didn't understand why at the time. Um, so a lot of things just built up and were tight within myself. And I noticed, which, which was very interesting, by suppressing portions of who I was, I tended, I ended up, um, I guess, partaking in extremes like there would be one point where I would be like really mellow and would be studying and then all of a sudden mm. boom like I just say I, I, I just want to like go and travel and then I would leave and go travel and do something really extreme go to like South America or <laughs> just like take off and go <laughs> Wow. so you're gonna end up compensating one way or the other <laughs> yeah how do you how do you see um, the how do, how do you think a, a universe of duality um, affected your life during that time? Mm. Um, when you say how it affected during that time, like... Yeah, so specifically when you were suppressing and expressing as radical, um, you know, radical actions that maybe you wouldn't have taken if you were more calm and centered and grounded in just taking one step at a time kind of thing. Um, the universe of duality being like, how does, how does the, the principle of duality, like you were, you were living one life on one hand and then, you know, on the other hand, you were living another life or, you know, there's lots of different ways that duality can be applied, but I just wanted to hear what was your experience of duality in that, in that lifestyle. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's interesting because I felt like I had less control mm. over um, my emotions, I guess. So the way that would look like is I would just be more extreme. So like whatever duality that I had, like whether it was my shadow side or uh, the other side, I would just, it would be a lot more extremely expressed. Mm. And by, by being more extreme, it's a lot harder to control mm. versus if you're living a life that's more balanced, it's a lot easier to see what's going on 
you know, if the scales are tipping, it's a lot easier to just tilt it back versus if you're all the way over here, it's going to be so much harder. You got you to run to the other side of the seesaw to get it to go down. <laughs> yeah. It's harder. It's just there's just more drama, you know? Yeah, yeah. Wow. That's, that's uninvited drama. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what I what I hear is like that that universe of duality played out in um, you got to experience what it's like to be on complete opposite spectrums of of the range, and it was through that saying like oh my god i'm way over here or oh my god i'm way over here that you said i don't want to keep doing that i want to learn balance i want to learn how to you know do micro corrections until i'm like you know in flow like all the time and i can go travel and have it feel perfect and go you know do wor a workout or go uh, you know dance or go do science and have it all like flow together and f make it feel easy and effortless and natural and um aligned exactly exactly yeah and yeah. what do you what do you think that lesson will do for you over the course of your life? Wow. Um, well, <laughs> it's interesting because all the, all the pain that has ever happened has just again been indicators hmm. and less a lot of lessons, and I, I just learned that the more balanced I am mm -hmm. the more I can actually give to people because it's a lot easier for me to take care of myself I just I'm moving like you said in flow like I'm just I'm a lot more in flow with my life I can be present I can I can see what's going on in front of me and uh, so it just feels a lot easier mm -hmm. to live and then whenever the pain does happen, I address it right away. Yeah. So it's, I hear awareness, like you're, you're so more in tune to the, the micro changes of life, which has you be able to take much more responsive um, and, and directed action versus like, I have no idea what I'm doing, but I'm just going to go to you know South America, right? Because I, I just feel like I'm supposed to versus now it's like, hey, I, I noticed this is off. I'm going to investigate in that. I'm going to you know get some peace and clarity around it. I'm going to take time to, to get centered and take my next action that is calculated and precise. Exactly. So, awesome. so yeah, learning to be more responsible Mm. But in an authentic way where I'm really flowing with it. Mm. Beautiful. Versus Beautiful. When it's too late, you know, when it's too right. extreme. Right. So we talked about this period of time where life was super out of balance for you. How did you move back into balance, so to speak, and move into embracing your, your dancing as well as the scientific side? And how does that all, you know, come together for you these days? Wow. So... I had to let go of everything, <laughs> like let go of everything that didn't serve me. Mm. It, and that was very hard because it, it's hard when you're so familiar in a situation, you're almost tied to the security because the security of it, it's just something that's known to you already mm. versus letting go of it and going into a territory of unknown, that could be very hard and scary. But I had to let everything go that wasn't serving me. And I had to listen to my gut feelings. And based on that, I know this, this sounds so crazy because it's so simple, but I just breathe. You just have to breathe in life and uh, breathing, integrating it with meditation, with yoga, yes. really getting clear headed. That's really what got me back into a place of wholeness where I, rem where I remember, oh yes, this is who I am. I love it. I love it so much because bre breath is, is such a powerful activator, such a powerful, um, you know, we're talking about the, the universe of of uh, duality this week next week it's going to be a universe of like singularity right and how there's one thing that kind of flows through everything um, like the intelligence right universal intelligence or something like that mm -hmm. and um, breath I feel like breath is one of those things that connects us to that oneness that allows us to like come alive and, and, and come come into 
relationship with with energy, with source, with creator, with the universe, God, whatever it might be. And I love, 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 love the concept of breathing and every like there's I, I can't even imagine the mysteries and the secrets and the answers that lie within studying breath and mastering breath but i'm sure you've you've learned a lot through through dancing and stuff so why don't you share a little bit about that with us you know how is it connected how's breath connected you to flow and to to dancing and to being present oh my gosh i love this (laughs) you can't there it's very hard to dance if you're not breathing Mm -hmm. and what's really interesting is that you actually breathe you learn over time the more connected you get to your body you can breathe through every single every single muscular point of your body you can literally breathe into that area and like fill it with breath and by creating that fullness you actually you have bigger movements more powerful movements and you're more controlled in your movements it's really interesting so you just become even more connected uh, to yourself, to your body, and it's a lot easier to connect to the music that way. So like you were saying, it it, it really kind of has this sense of oneness. Hmm. Why would someone who's in, uh, in, in, at their computer, typing up a blog post, um, scrolling on social media, you know, doing something like that, scrolling, doing their email, making sales calls. Why would they want the more expansive, um, you know, breathing and, and feeling in their body and being able to send and direct their, their breath into their muscles? Why would they want it? (laughs) Well, uh, if you're doing that for an extensive period of time, it's very easy to lose your sense of where you are. Mm. You're kind of you're immersed in, in the world of electronics and mm. and then you might not even realize that you're getting a kink in your neck or that you're sitting in like a weird posture. Um, but by sending breath into the area, your body remembers that it's alive. Mm. Remember you're you're feeding your body the oxygen it needs. So that it can keep moving. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think I also hear, or from from my experience, what I what I've seen to be true is when you don't breathe, like you lose, uh, the, you lose the resourcefulness, you lose the effectiveness, you lose the flow, you 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 lose the um, ease of creating results of taking the next step. You get t- more tired. You get more exhausted. You stiffen up, and that lack of breath creates a diminishment of our potential and our capacity, our, our power in the present moment to, to do, be, do, or have whatever we want. And it limits us. It constricts us. It constrains us. It gets us smaller. So if we want to be our greatest possible self and show up as confident and bold and powerful and, you know, like feeling like the, the king or the queen or whatever and making that sales call or writing that blog post and knowing it's going to succeed or sending that email and having the certainty that it's the best proposal possible, like, breath is an underlying factor in all of that and if if we choose not to master it if we choose to neglect it then it's like saying hey i know that i could be using a power up i know that i could be you know having a spotter at the gym so to speak to help me with my goals of closing the sale or sending out the email or writing the blog post and having it succeed but i don't need that spotter screw that spotter you know like i don't i don't need the help and i think it's it's naive and ridiculous quite um if people don't choose to master it because it's such an essential part and i know that there's a lot of people who are like yeah i know but you know what am i going to do like how how do i actually integrate that is it really does it really make that much of a difference and they're just not at the p- point of willingness to like master the basics or change or integrate something into their schedule so that they can um do that what are your thoughts on that well <laughs> that's interesting and um i mean what's interesting about what you said is that when you breathe it's just it's natural Mm. Breathing is so natural. You're born to breathe. The first thing you do when you come out into the world is you take a breath of air. <laughs> like you, <laughs> you are naturally 
able to breathe. So um, it's kind of like when you're at the gym and you're exercising and let's just say you want to lift or you want to, you just want to keep going with your exercises. If you're not going to breathe well, then you might be able to do the exercise for five minutes, 10 minutes, but then afterwards you're going to be done. Mm. Like you can't go keep going. But if you, if you pace yourself and you learn or just remember how to breathe mm. and just relax and remember, okay, this is how we do it, then it's so much easier. You, you just go with the flow, just like what we were saying. We just go with the flow. It's very, it's a lot easier. It's not... It's challenging. It's mm. challenging, but at least you're getting through it strongly. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love it. So, with regards to wellness, how does how does breath and dancing and flow relate to wellness? Yeah. So, just like what we were saying before, the breathing really helps you get connected uh get connected to yourself to your surroundings it helps you earth into the into the earth you it helps you integrate and become really present in your environment Mm. so while you're doing that why not have a little bit of fun and integrate that into the dancing and and the music and and the movement, because it, it is like we were saying, there's so many benefits to breathing, but when you put that into movement, mm. then you're, you remember, your body remembers how to move. It remembers how to do what it's born to do. You know, we're so used to being at the computer all the time and it's so easy to forget how to move. Mm. So why not do it and integrate it into a fun way to move, not only to for physical benefits, but to even express yourself while you're doing it and still remember to breathe too. <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. I, I just like this thought came to my head. So I, I, whenever something comes to my head, I ask it, what's your favorite, what's your favorite dance move or what's your body's favorite dance move? <laughs> wow. Um, you know, this tends to change. Mm-hmm. It really depends on the song. That's just like the song. For me personally, songs bring out the movements, but Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you can never go wrong, no matter where you are. (laughs) Never go wrong with the body roll. The body, you can never go wrong. That's right. That's (laughs) right. I love it. <laughs> That's so awesome, and I, I love I love this conversation especially because I I told you I, I like started dancing in Zumba and doing these like different types of dancing to get myself out of that engineering masculine mindset because I wanted to expand my my awareness. I wanted to expand my capacity. I wanted to become more, get more tapped into the feminine energy, be able to have more balance, access my range more effectively. So I love dancing as a whole because it's such a such a powerful way to tap into and listen to our body you know it's like if you're if you're dancing you have to communicate with your body like your body's not going to move the way you want it to move unless you are like good at communicating you know like with my hand to do this like like hand roll whatever you want to call it right so like it's so important to if we want to master this vessel and master this journey called life it is so essential to to learn and be able to communicate with our body like i was telling i think my my girlfriend who you met amazing amazing woman um i was telling her that i'm communicating with my body more like literally talking to my body saying hey show me what are the best nutrients to put into you show me what's the best way to approach this this workout and and how far i should stretch and extend my my muscles and my ligaments and which direction all this kind of stuff teach me how to create a body that is that is full of health that is full of vitality and energy that is well and also looks good because i'm committed to being buff and sexy and chiseled and all, all awesome and every area right so it's like i want to communicate with my body and listen to my body and it's not like i'm going to hear my body say hey you should do this right when i ask rather it's me putting in the energetic intention of i don't know how or when or what way you're going to tell me but i am asking and requesting for your help please show me what's the best way to move forward Um, what are your thoughts about that have you ever done anything like that or uh, do you have your own process of communicating with your body oh i love it so Absolutely, absolutely. 
Wow. Um, that again, that's why dance is so is so beautiful is because it really teaches you to communicate with your body and with your mind. Uh, and it, it takes time for you to understand how to, you know, move your body a certain way and to breathe a certain way. But like what you were saying, as you practice it, as you practice it, as you enjoy yourself in the process, over time, you build that resilience to really just take on whatever you need to take on and trust that your body is going to respond, your mind's going to respond the way that it needs to respond in that moment. Because hmm. when you're dancing, you have to be so present with what's going on. You know, the yeah. song is happening at a certain timing. Yep. It's happening around you. You just respond. You just, you have to really trust your feelings. Hmm. You just go. Yeah. Uh, you're not just like thinking about the move, you know, when you're doing it. Oh, is it just one? Is it like this? You're not, you're not thinking at all. It becomes so automatic. And that's like what you were saying. It, you really, you do learn how to connect, communicate with your body, with your mind, and even with uh, a, even a higher source. Mm -hmm. it, you, it teaches you that creativity and that connection. Yeah. And I think the higher source, I love that you said that because some people might think that I can only learn to dance when there's music or when there's, you know, I'm only going to learn to dance when there's Latin music. I'm only going to learn to dance when there's hip hop music. I'm only going to learn to dance when there's classical music. And like literally there's music happening all around us. Like we create the music, we create that experience and we can go out to like a nature, to, to nature or a forest or a field and create the, the, you know, the rhythm that the wind is having, that the rustling of the leaves is, is creating, you know, and, and like dance with nature in that aspect. So I love that it's it's really like what are we hearing what's the music that we're hearing what's the music that we're being inspired by not just literal music being played but what's the music in our life around us you know there's a fan right next to me what's what's the, <laughs> of the, you know, the fan that i can like that's dance true. to <laughs> right yeah that is so true you know that's actually what inspires music is yeah. that's what inspired music to begin with it was those little things it was you know like the birds singing outside the leaves rustling the wind blowing through the hair that's right that's right <laughs> it's, it's just it or like just doing chores like sweeping the floor that creates a noise yeah you're like the the car outside is honking its horn that creates yeah. a noise that's what in, really inspires people to to create music and and to create stories out of it mm. it's that form of expression but you're, you're absolutely right i mean technically you could dance to anything. Yep. Silence. <laughs> you, know, you could you could make it up in your head. Yeah, you know there actually there's this dance called style called stomp. I don't know if you've mm. heard of it, mm -mm. but it all all it is is just you're just clapping like a bunch of times and you're stomping the floor and wow. it's just a cappella. Wow. Creating the music <laughs> while you're dancing. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> That's so cool. So, yeah. what do you see? as the as the future evolution of your um dancing training and also like dancing as a whole you're because you, you you train people how to dance you do your own dances choreographies all kinds of cool stuff like that um and then there's dancing as a whole kind of thing so i, I just want to get into like how you see your brand evolving as well as like the world in dancing as a whole yeah so wow so i i um what I'm doing, how I'm evolving things is I really, I think just like what you were saying, it's so important to connect with your body, your mind, everything, integrate that communication. I'm actually creating programs that will help people um, dance or, or move while they're at the desk or while, because, you know, Again, it's hard to find that connection when you're just sitting all the time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I've actually done it <laughs> before when <laughs> even when I was sitting in an office, I would constantly move my body and realize, hey, this is actually kind of fun. You know, you're taking a break, you're, you're moving around. <laughs> yep, yep. 
So I'm working on that and, and integrating yoga into dance as well. Oh. Uh, which is going to be really cool. Yeah. It's a new thing I'm working on. Mm-hmm. Um, but in general, uh, you mentioned that uh, you want you wanted to hear how I think the evolution of, uh, you said, the direction of dance in general, like for yeah, the world? Yeah, for the world. You know what? I really think that the future is fusion. Mm. Fusion dance. Mm. Because... I, I think the future is we're eventually going to become a global culture. Mm-hmm. We have the power of the internet to, to kind of get there. But we will slowly become a little more global. And we're taking different styles of different music, different dance. We're fusing it all together. We're already seeing it. Like, even with the music today, people are putting EDM with... Uh, with jazz Mm. or like they're putting um, like Latin influences into the EDM like everybody's fusing everything together and yeah, what, I, what, I, what I love hearing, just want to in, in, insert this because I'm so passionate about it. What I love hearing is like um, the 90s and 2000s, like rock and oh, yeah. pop and mixed in with the EDM. And I'm like, yes, thank you. This is like my childhood dream come true. <laughs> uh, exactly, <laughs> it's so awesome. exactly. Yeah. Everything's just kind of fusing and integrating together. Yeah. So, which is kind of cool because you kind of you end up getting the best of everything. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. So. What role are you committed to playing in that evolution? How do you see you and, and your brand, you know, forwarding that, being being responsible for that? You said you're creating programs right now. Mm-hmm. Like that's that's right now. These are like, you know, the next steps, next couple months, next couple of years. And you, we have a lifetime ahead of us of really cool creation and imagination and opportunity and cool stuff like that. And technology is evolving like crazy. Um, so, if you had to say like what you want your legacy to be, and it might not be around dance, it can be if you want. Um, but what what is your legacy that you want to leave on this planet? I love it. Yeah. So there's a few things. I uh, I'm also in the process of creating my songs mm. to dance too. Love it, <laughs> love it. Singing and dancing, love it. <laughs> yeah, so that's one thing. Another thing is really using dance as, we, we were talking about this, but using dance as a therapy to help people not only prevent um, prevent diseases, but even to treat diseases. Like just dance therapy, helping people with trauma. It helps so much because... Again, like when things happen, disease happens, trauma happens, it's so easy to disconnect from yourself. And it's so easy to tr- to disconnect from the trust in yourself because something's just been thrown at you and you're just kind of like, what's going on? Right. So it's just a great tool to really heal and, and to know that it's okay to go through, go through this hardship. It's an expressive outlet that will help people cooperate with what's going on and hopefully even prevent what's going on. Hmm. (laughs) Awesome. Awesome. You know what else is cool? Silence. I love silence a lot. How has silence played a part in your life, Diva? Silence actually helps spark creativity. Hmm. Because when you block out everything the noise sometimes you really get perspective and clarity and that always helps me create so perspective clarity helps you create amplifies your ability to create it's beautiful so in terms of getting on shows and interviews and building your brand what do you think your biggest strength is when it comes to being interviewed and sharing about your brand on the media in in media well (laughs) my biggest strength is always dancing (laughs) so i just feel like in general like 
I know that uh, I just I feel like I'm gonna be performing just like mm. while we're doing the interviews we're performing so yeah. I don't know if you have music anyway <laughs> 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 should make that a requirement like listen i love doing interviews and i'm so i'm just like so in demand now i only take on interviews that allow me to dance so will you have music <laughs> yeah uh, that's like so true <laughs> but uh wait no what were we talking oh yeah so i almost forgot because i'm so into the dancing that's right you're just feeling it. You're, you're in flow question what question i'm dancing <laughs> You could use that at any any time. Like someone asks you an uncomfortable or question you don't want to ask or whatever or answer. You're like, I'm so, what, what did you say? Something like I'm dancing. <laughs> Sorry, I just can't control it. No, so in the zone. Like, like I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I love it. You know, and, I, and I really, really think yeah, yeah. my one of my biggest strengths in in interviewing or in life is just having fun. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Because you, when you just let go and have fun, everything just tends to work out. I don't. That's usually what happens for me. Mm. What happens when you do something new? Do you find that you are easily able to tap into that dancing mindset and energy and, and the fun mindset and energy? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Definitely. Yeah. Because subconsciously, you're already training yourself to take on new things all the time because you have a new song or mm. a different style that you're you're learning or whether it's choreography or even freestyle you're you're putting yourself in an uncomfortable position because you're not really knowing what to expect you you're trying to figure out how to move your body to this beat so you're kind of already in a constant unknown but it's so fun because because and then you're you're getting it you know you're you feel like you're getting it but um so when you take on new things in life the same kind of subconscious mind takes over where, where you're just like ready to just dive in and try new things and see if it works and who cares if it doesn't work, hmm. you know? You, you really learn how to fall, actually, when you can because it, it is inevitable to fall. Yep. With every new move or... You, but you have to learn how to fall and to love falling. Like, I always make it part of the choreography when I fall. <laughs> or I just change it and make it look like that was part of it. Right, right. And and sometimes it ends up creating something even cooler even than better. that. Better, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like it's like that that inspiration of the moment of of fall or you know supposed fall or the slip or the misstep or whatever. You know, it's like I think I think inventions have come about because of that because someone was trying to create something or they were trying to do something they're trying to do a regular process or whatever and they misstep or you know recipes like oh my gosh I'm cooking this thing and like they hit the shelf and all the stuff falls in and then they like oh what am I going to do and they end up cooking it and then they eat, end up eating it and they're like oh this is the best thing ever you know so it's like that those those kind of moments of well it wasn't supposed to be like this and what am I going to do with it yeah, exactly. It's like yeah. like potato chips. That's how potato chips were invented. <laughs> really? I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> By accident. <laughs> Dang. So, yeah, exactly. Uh, wow. You end up creating something you would have never thought, and mm. it could end up, it's better, better than what you have thought, or if not, then it's kind of fun following and just falling it. yeah yeah the, the fun of falling the fun of laughing at yourself it yeah is. exactly it is, it is, it is. It's pretty funny actually yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i love it i love it okay um what what would you say helps you helps you stay on task and perform at your highest level could be a, a resource or a practice or a mindset or something like that Wow. Uh, honestly, nutrition is mm. like a huge, it's huge. Yeah. Whatever, whatever you're fueling into your body is, is really giving you the energy you need to take on whatever you need throughout the day. Mm. Uh, so I, I always try to eat, I eat 
pretty healthy, like yeah, a lot of fruits, a lot of vegetables. I make sure I get enough sunshine throughout the day, make sure I get enough sleep, uh, make sure I socialize. Um, these very basic things, hmm. yeah, they're so basic, but they really are the fuel yeah. that help us keep going and to even stay balanced. It, it is the most basic thing that we can do for ourselves to take care of ourselves. Absolutely. 100%. I 100% agree, and it's whether it's food and nutrition or the thoughts that you think and the beliefs that you affirm and continuously reinforce, you know, it's all about what you put in, what you put into your body, your mind, your soul, whatever, um, 100%, what you get in, what you put in is what you get out, so that's 100% oh, yeah. true. yeah, definitely, true. and just like with what you eat, it totally changes uh, the way you think, too. Um, if you're not getting enough omega-3s, for example, it, it really changes how your, your neurons are firing at each yeah. other and how you're processing information. So, yeah, very important. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay, so we are beginning to wrap up now. Final takeaways and best points ever from this interview. What do you think those are, Diba? Ooh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> final takeaways. I think that if you look at life as a dance, mm. even, if, even if for whatever reason you're not into dancing, I mean, who doesn't love dancing, though? Who doesn't love jumping and, well, but before, and releasing before, energy? Before we go any further, I, 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 we have, I don't think we've literally said this. It's that you know the reason why we created this interview and I think the context we wanted to come in with is life is a dance. Like yeah. everything in life is a dance. There's a dance between, you know, the, the flowers and the pollination and the bees. There's a dance between uh, this this conversation is a dance. I take one step, Diva takes one step. I take 17 steps, Diva takes one step. You know, like I, I, I whatever, right? <laughs> exactly. It's literally like a call to a response. Right. And then you call and then you respond. Right. The yin and the yang. Exactly. You know? Exactly. So, and like you're you're literally trying to navigate through life and mm. life's taking you on a certain course and and you literally just gotta go with the flow of where it's going like mm. for example let's just say there's a wall right here and like you're you're really trying to get through the wall but it's not going through mm. that creates so much resistance so rather than just like punching the wall why don't you just dance through mm. it and oh rebound off the wall <laughs> rebound and then you're, you go to the next thing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> or dance around the wall. <laughs> yeah, see, like, exactly. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So dancing, life is, life is a dance. And then I, I interrupted you. Was there anything else that you wanted to share about that specific concept? Um, I mean, since life is, if life is a dance, since life is a dance, it actually becomes way more enjoyable. Because mm. you're, you're just so integrated into the environment and so present in the environment that you can just really take in everything you need to take in. You experience everything you need to experience. You, you not only gain the energy, but you give off the energy mm. too. Yeah. yeah. So why not have it be a dance? Why not have it be a fluid conversation, like the river flowing out into the ocean, mm. into the sunset? <laughs> Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> yeah, that, that's how, that's how li life should reflect, is through that dance. <laughs> Beautiful. Amazing. Diva, this has been a blast. I know people are hungry to take their next steps into their dancing journey with you, dancing into the sunset with Diva hand in hand. <laughs> so they want to know how do they stay connected? How can they continue their journey with you? What's the best way for them to do that? Oh, absolutely. So you can connect with me through uh, Instagram at Diva Dance okay. or even on Facebook. Uh, my Facebook name is Diva Sunny. Mm -hmm. Of course, Sunny because of sunny San Diego and of the lovely sunny sunsets. <laughs> my dream is like dancing on the beach. This is just like heaven. For, for forever. <laughs> for, forever and ever. 
So. Yeah, so definitely keep in touch. I'm going to be uh, sharing my journey. And uh, of course, just sharing uh, the courses that I'm creating and everything. So, and the music I'm creating. Yes, awesome. So people will definitely be able to see more about your dancing, learn more, get access to your courses and your singing and songs that you're creating. And they can do that at Instagram.com forward slash or at uh, Diba Dance. Is there an underscore in there or no underscore? Yes, yes. Uh, Diba underscore dance. Yep. Cool. <laughs> at at D E E B A underscore D A N C E. And you can search Deba Sunny. That's D E E B A space S U N N Y on Facebook to find her there and rock out with her and, and learn and grow and improve your dancing together. And Deba, thank you so much for coming on today and sharing your, your wisdom. It's been a blast of a conversation. Definitely been fun. Definitely been a, a dance and super enjoyable. And thank you for what you do and what you teach and who you are. Oh, thank you so much. This has been such a pleasure and I love your energy and enthusiasm and uh, keep doing what you're doing. It's great. I promise. I promise we will. It'll keep getting better and better. And Diva, have the best day ever, the best week ever, and we'll see you very soon, okay? All right. Thank you. Awesome. Take care. Bye. Bye.